really like a team like the Dolphins. Come on, like, you man. really want to stick with Ryan Tannehill? And or... look at all the quarterback injuries that took place last year. Mm-hmm. Even the Texans when they lost to Sean Watson. Instead of you going to Tom Savage, you decide. I mean, instead of you going to Kaepernick, you decide to go to Tom Savage. I don't understand that. Please, you would rather lose. I fit that system well. Too. You would, exactly. You would rather lose. All right. That's what we. That's what we get down to. Teams will rather lose than to call Kaepernick up and give him a shot. They would rather lose. They would rather make not make the playoffs, leave their fan base miserable. Talking about oh maybe next year, rather than getting a quarterback and, and trying to make the playoffs. They would rather lose. That's it, crazy. It really makes no sense to me. I mean, I, I like I understand the reasons why they're not going to sign him. It's it's ridiculous to me, and I think I think at some point. Colin Kaepernick's got, gonna get a lawsuit going against the NFL and these NFL owners. And he should it's be gonna, able it's to win. Gonna, it's in progress. It's, it's, it's in, gonna be. He huge. should be yeah, able to I win. I, I, I no, think it, we'll, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I think what's gonna bring it forward is when, <clears throat> if eventually Johnny Manziel lands a contract, then yeah, it's that's like, what exactly. <laughs> exactly. If Johnny Manziel lands a contract, I mean, I won't say I boycott the NFL because you know that season last year, as far as football. Strictly it's football. Still entertaining. That's yeah. entertaining. That season was entertaining, even down to the Super Bowl. I'm not gonna say I'm gonna boycott the NFL, but that's gonna be some eye popping flags right there. I right? holding pass interference, and that's flags right there. If Johnny Manziel, a guy that cannot stay out of trouble, mind you, what Kaepernick did was not a crime, was not against the law. All right, and you, and if they, if they bring back Manziel and put him on the team. Over Kaepernick, you gotta be kidding me. And what was OJ Simpson's comments? And, like, what was the context? He was saying he shouldn't be doing that because it's bad for his career. Like, he's not gonna. He start said again. he made a bad choice by attacking the flag. Listen, the word attacking right there, that 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 just invalidates anything that he says. Once he said the word attack, because I don't know what he's attacking. It's not like he went to the flag and attacked the flag and stabbed the flag. Okay, come on, really? He's just saying stupid. Come on. He's just making stupid comments. Oh my gosh, man! It's that, like, listen, he should go to prison for that comment. I mean, it does bring up the debate. It's like, well, <laughs> should Colin Kaepernick have done this? Go back to, to prison, preserve man. his NFL career. And you know, what? I disagree with that. I, I'm. It's it's ridiculous that he's not going to probably start again because all these teams are afraid to sign him. But like. Listen. I think would you rather go down as someone who, like Michael saying it, would you rather go down as someone who's fighting for what you believe in and becomes a, you know, social activist, or would you rather just be, you know, a normal NFL quarterback? And I, I think I think what he's doing is brave. He's he deserves a shot in the NFL. I'm not sure if he'll ever get one, but I know he definitely deserves it. And he's better than and he's better than you know some of these guys that are getting twenty million dollar contracts like Sam Bradford. Like, and that's and, why. Yeah. That's still why in the league. We need these NFL players to continue the protest. Why? Because you cannot let somebody take the fall for all of y'all. All right? Y'all play in a racist league, as I said it, and I say it again. The NFL is racist. You play, you, you're, uh, guess what? What makes up the, ma- the majority of the NFL? Black African-Americans. people. African Americans. Whatever you want to call it. All right? Just don't call it colored, because we ain't going <laughs> back there. But African Americans make up the most, you know, players in the NFL. So you mean to tell me of a guy that's just same skin complexion, all right, is going to stand up for all of y'all, and y'all not going to back him up? Y'all, gonna, y'all scared? Come on, man. We need more people standing up. We need to continue this fight on because at the end of the day, if we can't fight for Kaepernick, then why did Kaepernick fight for us? Honestly, I'm just saying. But, hey. And at the end of the day, these players, just a radio they, play, personality. they play for their team. They play for their own ownership. They know what situation they're in with their own team. You know what I mean? Their own ownership, that whole group, the whole chair upstairs. So they're not. They they don't look at it as they're playing for the shield of the NFL. They play for their own team and just for themselves. You know. But anyway, that's the way it has to be. Anyway, we want to know what y'all think about this situation with Kaepernick and OJ's comments. You can feel free to call up the request line at six zero seven seven five three forty eight one nine. Get a pen. Get a paper. Mike Vick got another chance. Got exactly. Sure. All right. 607-753-4819. Once again, 607-753-4819. Follow that Twitter, WSUCFM, not Instagram, at WSUCFM, and Mike.Lil, 90.5 FM. It's approximately 1038. We're going on a quick commercial break. And when we come back, March Madness. We got y'all covered with that. Don't go nowhere. Don't you turn that radio station. All right? Don't you turn nothing. All right? Stay where you at. Me be right back.
y'all. Imagine that the mics wasn't on this whole time. <laughs> it was just that happened to me before. Like that happened. To yeah, that happened right at the beginning. Yeah, right That's at the beginning. Funny, <laughs> but it was like it wasn't bad. It was like ten minutes, right. like five minutes or something like that. I felt a little out of place. But it turns out I wasn't alone. And I but it worked out good because the, the, the computer was acting up, so it actually worked out bad. And OEM vets who got you back here just like they did over there. So now I'm never alone. I can get the resources I need and talk to tons of people who understand where I'm coming from. Whether it's navigating the GI Bill or VA hospitals, managing the transition homes, yeah, or meeting people you can share stories with, you'll find it at IABA. Now we got the end of the world. It's just everyday stuff. Like getting tips on where to find a nice sweater for my dog. Oh, they would. I think they would beat Oklahoma City. Okay, maybe not that. Dude, but bad people else. hating on Melo right now. No matter where you are, I rather have Gang Sanders of America is here for you. Join our community at IABA.org. They're going to need it. Of course they're going to need it. And then he's going to be able to do it. Melo's going to be hungry in the playoffs. If you would like quality diamonds at exceptional prices, then turn to Tom Tuckman's Diamond Buy. If you would like sparkling two yeah, pairs of these cups for only forty nine dollars, uh, then yeah, come Nick's to Tom's Tuckman's Diamond Mines. We don't want to help you. We want to win. You come to <laughs> no, they won two games in a row. We won our tank already. That was it. Tom Tuckman's Diamond Mine because Tom Tuckman's the best away. Last week, at the age of forty-seven, leaving his wife and three children, struck down in his prime by the same disease that got his father. So he won't be around to care for his family. And the sad part is, it all could have just tomorrow's game, not Friday's test. But Tom didn't get it. Have you gotten the medical tests you need? For a list of tests every man should have, go to ahrq.gov. Once again, that's ahrq.gov. A public service announcement brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. Excuse me, do you know how to get to Maine and Maple? Do you have these in a seven and a half? How is that cooked? Can I get that shipped overnight? Is there a direct flight? How long does the warranty last? What's your soup of the day? How do you change the ringtone? Does it come in blue? Does this bus stop at Elm Street? We ask questions everywhere in life. Is it raining out? Uh, what time's the meeting? How much does this cost? Does it have four-wheel drive? Have we met before? What's my account balance? Yes, somehow, when we get to the doctor's yeah. office. <laughs> so black. Any questions? Um, some, at least some no. NBA, NFL Clam up. Uh, ask questions. What is this test for? Are there any side dances? When do I get my results? Yeah. Yeah. Questions leads to better health care. Go to ahrq.gov for a list of 10 questions everyone should know. Questions are the answer. Public service announcement brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. We got non-stop music. What do you get? WSUC. WSUC. Yeah, you know when you hear that tune, you know it's March Madness. I, I don't got to say nothing. Y'all already know when you hear that tune, you know it's March Madness. So guess what? Let's talk about some March Madness, please. All right. Seven of the top four seeds are out of the NCAA tournament. Now, is this good for the NCAA tournament? And for that, I got a guest on, another guest on, Cooper. How's Hello. it going? Pretty good, pretty good. Thanks for having me. All right. So I want to know your opinion on this. Do you think the amount of upsets with the top teams going out, do you think this is good for the NCAA AA tournament? Um, you know, of course I think it's good. And, you know, before I start, you know, rest in peace to all of our brackets. But yeah. this has been the yeah. best tournament in a long time because of all these upsets. UMBC, 16 seed, the very first 16 seed beats Virginia. Now, I'm a Syracuse guy, so I'm happy when Virginia loses. That's fine with me, but... That kind of stuff can only happen in the tournament, and that's why casual listeners tune in to March Madness. That's why season-long listeners tune in to March Madness. 
This is why they play the game. This is why, this is what it's meant to be. The David versus Goliath, the David should have a chance. And, you know, this year, the David is winning more often. And it's awesome. It's it's awesome. Most opinion. definitely. I think it's good for the tournament. I really do. Because at the end of the day, we who want a predictable tournament? We want to see upsets. And that's what we're getting. You have, what's it, Lola Chicago still in the tournament beating teams. You have the, the first ever number 16 seed. Beating the number one C. That had not happened in Humble. years, decades. They dominated. They like dominated the game. 20. Like, this is unbelievable. This is uh, unbelievable. Uh, Virginia team that was playing good all year, and everybody had kind of had them penciled in as a, in their, exactly. at least their final four. And, you know, they, they lost DeAndre Hunter before. We knew he wasn't going to play. but And that's, like, their most NBA-ready player. But you still have to prepare for the game. You still had four losses in the regular season. Two losses in the ACC, which is the best conference in college basketball. You have to be, you have to be prepared for the game. And UMBC came out, punched them in the teeth. They couldn't recover. Virginia's smallest starter was the same height as UMBC's tallest player, their center. How? That's just absurd. That that's absurd. UMBC had no business winning that game. points in the second half. Showed out, my man. Loved it. Most definitely. Most definitely. But um, this is what I like about the NCAA double tournament. This is what I like about it because it's not like it's a series, all right? It's not like, oh, seven games and then you win. It's a one and done. So you can be a top team, all right, ranked in the top four seeds, but you got to play. It's not about what you did in the regular season. It's about what you're doing right now, when it matters the most, when the pressure is up, when it's out of you win or you go home. And that's why you're susceptible to all these upsets. And that's why it's such a big deal when Selection Sunday happens and this bracket's made because once you make it, everybody has a fair chance, you know? And the teams that would be great all year and those teams that just squeaked into the bracket and just got selected, they have the chance to be able to maybe make a name for themselves and get known and get noticed, get that publicity. And UMBC definitely did that by <laughs> smashing Virginia. And exactly. Can't it's crazy. That's never happened in the past. And we finally were able to see it here in 2018. It's crazy, and a lot of that game. It was a couple games that was good. I like the Michigan, the one with Michigan when they lost by two. That was a that was a good game. See, like I said, this is March Madness, y'all. All right? If you're not hyped up for it, you better get hyped for it, cause this this is March. This is the time of the year where it's just you you at the edge of your seat because you know you just don't know. All right, you just don't know. But we got a couple teams that are left. What you about to say? Well, you know, you're at the edge of your seat in some matchups, like Loyola Chicago beating Miami in the first game, you know. Any kids out there watching, listening right now, Lonnie Walker missed two free throws down the stretch, cost them the game, cost Miami the game, led to the buzzer beater. You know, there's close games like that, and then there's number 13 Buffalo killing Arizona, who everyone thought yeah. Arizona was, you know, a little bit underseeded. I was, I was like, they're at least the three. But no, they got the four. I was like, okay, they're gonna they're gonna show their worth. They're gonna they're gonna they're gonna crush Buffalo. They're gonna get through. No, they got outplayed, ran off the floor. Personally, I Kentucky, think Sean Miller was out coached in that game. And then Kentucky beat Buffalo pretty handily. Not, oh, yeah. I mean, it was it wasn't a bad game, but you know, I expected Buffalo to. They just took over. Yeah, Kentucky they just, just took, took over. over yeah. Adjusted something yeah, that definitely. Arizona couldn't do because Buffalo pressed early on against Arizona, and Sean Miller did not know how to deal with it. I, I think he got outcoached in that game. And for this young Kentucky team, it, it kind of looks like it's a, a, an easy path for them to get to that Final Four for the first time in there. Yeah, and really it a is. long time. It shows for Kentucky that like they can just slide right through. I think they're not going to have any problems with Kansas State. The only team that I see in this conference that might give them a problem is Nevada. When they go against them, if they beat Loyola Chicago, which I think they will, Nevada matches up well because they are a big team, and I think they can give Kentucky a little bit of problems. Most definitely, and what what else? Um, Oklahoma with Trey Young going out the first round. Oh, that was my that bracket. was a good game. My bracket was done after the first, first matchup. Man, me too. Yeah. I had Oklahoma winning. Too. Man, that's just how it goes. Yeah, I, mean, my, I mean, my bracket's done, but the two teams I have in the finals are still there, so you never know. Yeah, I, I, know. I, I put in my bracket Purdue and Kentucky, so we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens, but let's move on to Trey Young before we make our. Predictions for tomorrow's game, the Elite Eight, y'all. Before Trae we make Young our predictions, let's draft. talk about Trey Young. So, is Trey Young making a mistake by leaving school early 
to enter the NBA lottery? I, uh, not at all. Not at all. So. It's a once in a lifetime opportunity to be able to join the NBA. That's what you live for. That's what these guys play for every day. They practice every day. They went through all those years of playing ball, high school, college. It, it's time. I mean, he wants to join the league. He's going to get drafted probably in the, in, with a top 10 pick. And why not? Um, if you have the opportunity, if he has to go back to school, say an injury happens, you never know. So, I mean, now's the time. He thinks he's NBA ready. And now it's time to put the pedal to the metal, get the training amped up, everything times 10, because it's a totally different game. I don't, I'm going to have to disagree with you. Not by, not like, you know, like, you know, like by a long shot. But I feel like Trey Young should at least come back for another year. I really do, because at the end of the day, yes, he, we all know he can shoot. We all know he got range. His range is from half court almost. We all know that he can pass the ball. But he's short. He's a defensive liability. Kind of reminds me of like IT, Isaiah even though IT is, you know, shorter, obviously. Mm -hmm. He can't really pull up from how, up. you know, Trey Young could pull up from. But still, he I feel like he needs to be more built. I don't see him being built. However, Let's say he goes to the right team with the right system, because you know, this, you know, with all these spread offenses in the NBA, space the floor, three pointers, he will he'll definitely fit well. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that you know that he's not going to fit well by leaving now, but I feel like having a one more year to come back to school, build, be built up, be more ready and fit to be able to play an 82 game. You got to remember that it's not no half a season, an 82 game regular season. And you being a defensive liability, you being not built, you have to be built to play 82 games. That's why I would have loved to see him come back for his sophomore year. Yeah, I mean, I think? totally understand where you're coming from. I mean, uh, I'm all for players staying in college, getting more seasoned and, and built for the league and ready for it. Just to amp up the competition and more and more just constant re repetition of playing all these players. And as the years go on, you get better, your game gets better. But when you have that opportunity to be able to to declare for the draft and know you're going to be a top 10 pick, I mean, I think you strike with the iron's hot. You don't risk any setbacks, any injuries, anything happening. And maybe this is the highest that his stock could ever be. So I, I agree that he's joining the draft. Well, yeah, you got to take advantage of your stock. If you're Trey Young, you're undersized. You know, you're kind of like Curry-ish in that, in that uh, profile. And you just got to take advantage of your stock. You can't, you can't deny that money, a money, you know. And if you look at players like McCall Bridges, who's been in college for three years, he's a junior, much more complete player, going to enter the draft, possibly a top 10 pick. And there's just, as you guys said, you can build your game more in college if you stay longer. And we're seeing the effects of that with players that leave early and players that stay longer. Exactly. That's why I feel like he should stay. Like, he could be able to build. He needs to be built more than me, honestly. He's not like a guy that I would be scared of. When I, when I have the ball, and he's on defense. He got to be built up more. All right, you're going to an 82-game series, and we'll, I don't know what team is going to drive him. We're going to get into one possible destination in a minute. But I feel like he needs – I feel like it would, I would have loved to see him come back for another year, progress, and then take off. That's that's how I would have seen it, you know. But, hey, at the end of the day, he's doing what's, what he thinks is best for him. And, you know, we're going to move right – into where he could possibly end up because there's talks, you know, with him and the Knicks possibly. He said it would be a blessing if he played for the Knicks if the Knicks drafted him. So I want to know, in your opinion, should the Knicks draft Trey Young? Well, yeah, that would be a blessing, but that's a prayer because the Knicks have three young guards that I don't think they should be fighting for minutes with Trey Young. There's a lot more positions to be filled on the Knicks. They got Trey Burke, they got Emmanuel Moutier, Frank Nibikina. There's no reason to be drafting an undersized guard that is only a volume shooter when we need a more complete player around in the Knicks, like McCall Bridges, like I said before, like Miles Bridges, like Mo Bamba can lock down the center position. So, you know, I don't think he, I don't think the Knicks should go for him, but we've seen the Knicks do some dumb stuff in the past, <laughs> and I can see them drafting Trey Young, but uh, I don't think it's a good fit for them, and I don't think they should get them. Yeah, I don't think I, – I, as uh, you, you hit every point that I was going to bring up. I mean, they don't need any – they don't need any upgrade at the, at the guard position with what they got. Those guys ain't going anywhere. They they have their young guards that they're going to base their team around. They're going to want another big body in that paint and all-around player that can stand next to Porzingis because who even knows if Porzingis is going to come back 100% or even to start the season next year. Yeah. So we shall see with that. 
Um, I think it's a bad move for Trey Young because, as you were saying, you need a good system for a young player, and I don't think the Knicks have that right yeah, system in for a young exactly, player development. Exactly. If, I mean, the Knicks, as, as, I don't look at their coach as being a guy that could actually help Trey Young progress. Yeah, and, and Hornets said they're saying he's probably not going to be back at the end of the year. Exactly. So. But, they, you know, if they can hire some good um, potential head coaches that are still looking for jobs. Yeah, it's not easy. They could Mark be, Jackson. Yeah. I like that hire. That would be a good Bill hire. That's just, <laughs> yeah. You know, let Mark, Mark Jackson come back home, right? But at the end of the day, yeah, I don't think the Knicks should draft him either. I don't really think so because at the end of the day, like you said, like both of y'all said, they have guards. All right, what the Knicks need to do, I mean, it's a lot of things. I could go on and on and on about what the Knicks need to do. But... It, right now, they don't need guard play. All right, they they could build them. They can get a couple more pieces here, but going after a young Trey Young, Trey Young. That's why I said Trey Young is a guy that needs to be put in the right system, a system that's already jumping that he can be plugged in there. The Knicks don't have that system. A coach that's been around, uh, exactly. A leadership coach can't exactly. go. A young player developing can't exactly. go to a team that's can't go to a team still like rebuilding that. and getting a new coach. Because it's not Malik Monk working. all over again. Exactly. exactly. So hey, we'll we'll see what happens. Like I said, I I thought he should have came back another year, you know, improve his draft stock even more, and improve his body up even more, putting on more weight and being able to be NFL NBA fit for an 82 game series. But hey, at the end of the day, like I said, he did what was right for him. So it's interesting to see where he goes, and that's another topic for another day. Hundred percent. You know, you can hit that request line at 607-753-4819. You know, call us up on this Wednesday night. It's 10.55. 10.55. Approaching halftime of our show. The first show from season two, the second half. The We're second half of season two. Yep. And we hope you guys are in it for the next couple of weeks while we finish it up. Yeah. Season know, finale is May 2nd. What do we do, Leo? We keep it real as always. As always. You, you know the deal, okay? We, we, you all know the deal by now, all right? So call up that request line at 607-753-4819. We know y'all listening. We know y'all got something to say. Y'all, y'all know, we know that y'all probably like, yo, what is Mike or what is Lil talking about? So I want to know, what do you feel we was wrong at? All right? Call up the request line. Have your voices heard. We want to know how y'all keep it real. Talk about the madness. Exactly. Talk about the March madness. We talked about NFL free agency so far. We talked about Trey Young. We got more to talk about. So we want to know. Which our opinion is on what we talked about so far. 607-753-4819. Do you want... You could call up and tell us what y'all want to hear us talk about. We can do that too. We can plug it in right now. Once again, 607-753-4819. It's approximately 1056. We're going to go on commercial now. When we come back, we'll have our Sweet 16 NCAA Tournament Predictions. All right? For tomorrow's games and Friday's game. And then after that, me and Mike is gonna release our we're gonna release our top five at least in the last twenty years, which was done by ESPN magazine. We're gonna have our own top five. So, and then we have our Craig Mack tribute. Listen, y'all don't wanna go nowhere. That's all I'm saying. We'll be right back. What kind of commercial is Stacy? <laughs> That's one every 26 that seconds. Was atrocious. So here's oh, a 26 was second I Tom Brady was like, yeah, number 20? 20 spots by the What? Man, what? No sense. What? I've been there. Top it's 20 tough. most dominant and athletes in the last 20 years. Find yourself feeling Here's number one. Use it as a high school woods. Let it Peyton Manning was three. That's what I'm saying. I mean, if you're going to say dominant, the I would put Brady over yeah. Manning anyway. Seriously, you're over, capable I mean, of great things. I think Peyton's probably the overall better quarterback, better body of work. Of number one, he I wasn't at it. Number one, I just shoot your same ball. Oh, See you at yeah, graduation. no doubt. Like, Top five. That's a good one. Do you have uh, 26 seconds to convince a student to I mean, he's a jerk. Oh, yeah. You can share your message of support. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> shit. You can't keep students in school. Oh, <laughs> this is the step dot org. And take a first yeah, step. Yeah. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
I finally did it. I opened a 401k. So you're giving up, just like that. Giving up on what? I'm giving an inheritance from a distant relative. Don't you think if there were a billionaire in the family, we'd be able to get a I don't even have time to pay debt. I'm riding horses on the top. One call from Chris. I'd probably do. Butler using summer as a bird. He's a jerk, but I feel like Floyd Mayweather's got to be up there too. He's like nah, fifty and six. Nah, I don't like. I don't like his choice of fighters. He dug Pacquiao for five years. He fought McGregor. Are you kidding me? No, I'm a Mayweather fan too. I'm saying I'm a Mayweather. I watch every Mayweather fan, but I don't. To me. You should, you watch your in terms of dominance, though, like, in terms of know, dominance, like, yeah, but you know, when it towards the end of his career, uh, the last people he fought, like Andre Gordo, who was washed up, and McGregor, and then you waited to fight a washed up Pacquiao. I don't like that. I don't like that. Percent is trying UFC now. Yeah, I don't believe that. Why not just retire? Yeah, I'm weak. You could do it. Nah, nah. I mean, wrestling is just athletes, you know. They be doing a lot. For the romantic comedy, anything but sunshine, please press two. All right, so when we come back, um, should we go through the game? Yeah, I'm going to get Jake with this one. Okay. In, in between them, me and Mike, we'll do our listening, and I'm going to get Jake on for his position. Okay. Then, that's it. You selected anything but sunshine. You expect options the in the world with Serena Williams. I'm probably going to explore all your options. Yeah. Yeah. And talk with I'm your doctor. We're number five. No, no, no. We're doing that top five. Oh, uh, okay. Grand Slam. When she was pregnant or something? Yeah, it's Number five. She played with a baby in her stomach, boy. Yeah. Uncle Dan? Mom? I like my Dad? Where's LeBron at? If you store your guns properly. Five. Not just anyone can get to them. Oh, let me get a pencil. Safer when walking home. 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 The yeah, only New Jersey team, man. Sure. <laughs> they've been sure. struggling. Sure. Like Schneider. Oh, weren't they in the playoff race? Yeah, they That's still it. are. Oh, okay. Yeah, they have the second wild card spot, but they're only a point above yeah. Florida. Oh, man. Yeah, man. Lock it up. Shoot. For more information on firearms, Schneider's safety. Yo, this is hard. I thought you were going to do this. You told National me to do it. I know I had it, but I kept forgetting, bro. I kept switching. Yeah, I got to do community service at 6 a.m. You feel petrified. You're struggling yeah, with your mortgage oh, payments. Yeah. Not knowing You're not doing that shit yet? No, I had to do another one. We got another one. Oh, you got another written yeah. you keep For what kind of community service? Uh, uh, I'm going to go to the park side. I don't even know Making what they're going to do. Affordable. So like yeah. Dude, you'll probably just be like cleaning shit. Like you might be like custodial. Yeah, yeah. Like, that's shit. Yeah. That's not really written up again for. Call eight 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 nine nine five. All right, I got my list. In the dorms. Yeah, and when they give them the money, that's so nice. Now we got to get out. Stop you, bitch. 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 Yo, am I coming up first? Yo, what's you see? I think I'm making, am I making mine first? Or? Yeah, we'll all make it. Okay, we are back from commercial and it's time to talk about to make our predictions, our NCA double NCA tournament 316 prediction. And before we make our predictions, right? Let me finish this beat, okay? Let's, let me finish this beat. Because I got to get motivated, you know? I got to get motivated to get in here and make these predictions. So guess what? We're coming right back, right now. Woo! I know you feel that. Central New York! As always, hit that request line 607-753-4819. It's time to talk about who's going to make the Elite Eight. The elitist of the elitist. And we're going to talk about these games coming up tomorrow and Friday. 
but why not get started? We still got Cooper on me, with me and Leon. We're going to talk about this game. Number 7, Nevada versus number 11, Loyola Chicago. One of the stories, Loyola Chicago. It's the game that's going to be on CBS. It's 7 7 tomorrow. What you guys got? Um, I'm going to start off. I got, I got an upset. I got an upset. Wow. I got an upset alert. Wow. Upset alert. Yeah, coming. Lola Chicago. All right. Where the? Yes, I, Lola Chicago. I got an upset. Okay, I got an upset. Bottom line, I got an upset. I like that. You know, I like Loyola, but I want to go with them. But I think the Martin brothers on Nevada and their size—they're too big to deal with for Loyola. I think Nevada wins a close game with that. Yeah, 100%. I'm going with Cooper. I think Nevada got the size. I think that they're going to be able to be a problem in the paint all game, and they're going to give Loyola. Uh, I, I don't think it's going to be as close as people think. I think Loyola, their, their, their dream has happened. And the run they, is over. Yeah, the run's over. I mean, keep it, the dream I, alive. I won't count them out. Gonna close. I won't keep, count keep, them out. Keep the dream alive. I'm, I'm telling Nevada y'all. I'm it. telling y'all. That's my up, That's my upset. Um, Next, next. Next um yeah game. and the next game we got number three Michigan as they take on number seven Texas A and M and I'm actually looking forward to this one. This yeah, be a good game. that's my this one of my favorite ones out in the fifty the, fifty. Yeah, fifty fifty right there. But hey, you know what? I'm gonna go with Texas A and M. I upset. got got another upset. Listen, I'm the upset guy, all right? Because guess what? I'm always upset. So guess what? Why not pick an upset, right? Number seven Texas A and M is going to beat Michigan. All right, at 737 on TBS. That's what I got to say. I don't know. Watch out. We I got. I'm also going to go with A&M. I think hey. If they can. Upset if, alert. If they can board up like they did against UNC. I think they can dominate Michigan on the boards. I think they can I think they can take them out. And with their size, they'll, they'll win that game easily. 100% beating a UNC team that I believe is better than Michigan. And um, they just play that style of play. They, they capitalize on turnovers. They don't make stupid mistakes. They got this game. I'm going with A&M as well. Number five, Kentucky. Kentucky versus the number nine, Kansas State Wildcats. At 937 on CBS, I'm going to go with Kentucky. Yeah, we're tripping here. Kentucky's going to win this game. Kansas State barely beat UMBC, and UMBC was not on their A game like they were against Virginia, and Kansas State could barely beat them. I think Kentucky's going to win this game pretty handily and go with the Elite Eight. Yeah, I'm going with Kentucky as well. I got them on my bracket going into that finals. I think they might have a clear path to it, clear path to the final four at least. Um, I think they give uh, Kansas State a, a, a pretty good rundown uh, tomorrow. Gonzaga! <laughs> number four, Gonzaga versus number nine, Florida State at 959 on TBS. Uyaga. Well, every time I fill out a bracket, I always see that Gonzaga team. You know what? I can't not pick them. I always have them going a little bit, going into my bracket, maybe a little bit into the Elite Eight. I'm always picking them. I'm always seeing that team. And um, I'm liking Gonzaga tomorrow against Florida State. I think Florida State's been playing their best basketball. And Gonzaga is a scary team to look out for. You know, I think Gonzaga's going to win this game too, but let's not count out Florida State. I mean, that's a well-coached team. Yeah, well-coached team. And, you know, Gonzaga's been playing their A game, but so is Florida State. So I think that's going to be a really close game. Close to like where Texas A and M and Michigan's gonna be, kind of fifty fifty. I think a lot of people are counting out Florida State. Yeah, but I'm not gonna sleep on them. I'm gonna go. You know me, the upset guy. I'm going with Florida State, y'all. All right. How that how that theme song go? How they how they theme song go? I forgot how it go. Can somebody remind me? Oh, oh, Florida State. I got Florida State winning this game in a nice close game against Gonzaga. I got it. So tomorrow's going to be packed with March Madness yes. basketball, but you can't forget about Friday. Can't forget got about Friday. Coming up. We got number one, Kansas Jayhawks, taking on number five, Clemson, and what it seems to be a good battle. Yes. I got... Who you got, Cooper? I think Kansas is going to win this game pretty handily. Clemson's been playing pretty well, but I think that it's more of their opponents playing under their level of yeah. ability. Uh, Kansas has been playing pretty well. They played a solid game against mm-hmm. Seton Hall last round. And uh, I think I that was a good, good team. team. That was a good team. team. Respect the team. Definitely. Shout out, shout out, a mean man. Shout out to Kadeem. He graduated from my alma mater too. So okay. shout out to him. Definitely, that was a good. He had a good game. Team. He had a good game. Uh, I think Kansas wins that game. Yeah, I think I think Kansas win that game too. Single handed. Yeah, I'm taking Kansas as well. Um, number one, Villanova versus the number five West Virginia Mountaineers at 7:27 on TBS. 
Take me home. Woo. Country road. I'm Country going West road. Virginia. Oh, the upset, upset the alert. One Villanova going down upset West Woo. Virginia. You well, know, I think this is the best game of of this of this round, Sweet 16. I think Villanova wins because they are the best team in the tournament. But it just stinks that they have to be playing West Virginia because I think West Virginia is a phenomenal team as well. I think Villanova's excited. overall skill, I think they're better coached. I think they're going to come out with the win because West Virginia's offense will not be able to keep up. I got Villanova. Villanova! I got Villanova. I'm telling you, I think they're going to win this game. I think they're going to win this game by 10. I got Villanova by fair, 10. It's fair. Number two. The Duke Blue Devils. I know you Central New Yorkers are looking forward to this one. Oh, yeah. Woo! Central New Yorkers. Versus number 11, Syracuse. Versus number 11, Syracuse. Okay. This is, okay. this is. I like this okay. game, too. I like this game. I think this game going to be good. Yep. Central 100%. New Yorkers, do me a favor. Yeah, hi. When I make this prediction, please don't come after me. I'm just telling you like it is. Because number two, Duke is going to beat them. I got number two, Duke. Yeah, I mean, it, it's hard to go against uh, uh, such a good coach team in Duke. And number two, I mean, uh, Duke has been playing well all year. They're always good every year. It's hard to bet against them in this one. You know, I'm a big Syracuse fan, but unfortunately I have to pick against them here, as I did against Michigan State, but they proved me wrong. I love that. I love them for that. But the 2-3 zone won't work on Duke because Duke runs the 2-3 zone as well. And I think Duke's offense is going to take over in this game. And I don't think the Syracuse offense will be able to hang with, with Duke. Unfortunately, Syracuse goes out this round. Bye-bye, Syracuse. Bye-bye. Number two, Purdue versus the number three, Texas Tech. Red Raiders. Red Raiders. <laughs> At 957 on TBS. And this closes out your Sweet 16. Um, another good matchup. Great game. Yeah. Phenomenal 50, game. 50 again. close it out for you. To set up that Elite Eight. I'm going with number two, Purdue. I'm going with Texas Tech. I've liked Texas Tech a lot. I think if they could play up the potential, I think they're Final Four team, possibly. I mean, they got to get through Villanova, but, you know, I like Texas Tech in this game because Purdue, without Isaac Haas, I don't think they're going to last, even though they are playing well without him. I got number tech, I got number three, Texas Tech, also. I'm right along with you. I think that they're going to be able to pull out a close game. Probably by like four. I got the Red Raiders. Red Raiders, y'all! But before we go on commercial... Thanks a lot, Cooper, for hanging out with us today. Um, thanks for having me. All right, this is our March Madness aficionado. All right, so he's definitely going to be here with us, especially with March Madness. And before we go on commercial, we want to hear Jake's predictions for these games real quick. So, Jake, starting on Thursday, tomorrow, as we just ran down through the list, who you got down the list? All right, I'm going to start with Kentucky. I'm taking them to beat Kansas State. Uh, like you guys said it earlier, I think they just have a really easy slate this year. It's not one of the best teams they've had in a couple of years, but I think their offense should be able to keep rolling. Uh, going down the list, uh, I'll take Nevada over Loyola Chicago. Uh, Sister Jean isn't going to be too happy after that, but I think Nevada's got a pretty solid team. and uh, It's a nice story with Loyola, but I think, they're, uh, I think their run's over. Uh, I'm taking Gonzaga over uh, Florida Gonzaga. State, too. I mean, going mostly chalk here so far, but I just I love Mark Few. I think he's one of the best coaches in college, and uh, and uh, I just really think he's going to have the team prepared. Uh, I'm taking Texas A&M over Michigan. That's one of my big upsets. Yep. I, I yep. love the way their offense played. I like they were, that. They, were, they, get, they got big men. They were shooting threes over UNC. They really put the they really put their you know throat down on their they put their foot down foot down throat. on their throat. That's yep. what I'm trying to say. Yeah. I love the way they played. I think they could really beat Michigan. Uh, I'm taking Villanova to beat West Virginia. I think Villanova, I think Bridges is having an unbelievable season. I think he's going to be probably a top 10 draft pick. Uh, they're playing out of their mind. They're gonna, I could easily see them in the finals again. Uh, I'm taking Purdue over Texas Tech. I think Purdue is probably going to, has a good chance to make the finals if they didn't have such a tough bracket. They're going to have to get through Villanova and Duke if they you know, even win this Which game. Which is not happening. Who knows? You never know. And uh, going down here, I'm going to say Kansas over Clemson. Uh, I kind of, I always like taking teams that co are coming off a blowout. Uh, Clemson just destroyed Auburn, who didn't really, they didn't really look like they practiced. They just did not really come to play. <laughs> they probably didn't go to practice that week. <laughs> nah, I, just, uh, I think they. Uh, what you I talk th about practice. <laughs> <laughs> that feels like a letdown game. I'm going to take Kansas. That's kind of you know going chalk here. And then uh, yeah, I'm going to take Duke over Syracuse. I. I cannot believe that Syracuse has won two games. I watched them a couple times over the regular season. I watched them against Duke. I bet on that game. I lost. 
Uh, the bracket messed up. Absolutely. But I, the, I know Syracuse is a team that once they get in the tournament, they make noise every year. Absolutely. But, you know, I, I just love the way Bagley was playing. I mean, the other day against uh, who did they play the other Michigan, State. Michigan State. Uh, or no, Duke. But uh, Bagley, he scored, uh, I think he had 22 points. It was like 8 of 10. He, he's unbelievable. We're talking about, you know, high draft picks. I'm hoping the Knicks get to the top five in the lottery because I think Bagley would be perfect in the number four spot next to uh, – Next to Porzingis there, but yeah, those are my picks. All right, thank you, Jake. Thank you, Kubo, for hanging out with us tonight. And when we come back from commercial, me and Mike got a special segment where we're going to release our top five athletes of all time, as you know, ESPN Magazine. The last 20 years. All right, released their top 20 most dominant athletes. So we, me, me and Mike, we didn't like the list, pretty much. So we're going to give you our own list, all right? Top five, when we come back from commercial, we have our Craig Mack tribute. So you don't want to miss it. What we do, we keep it real. We'll be right back. And before we even go on the break, once again, call up the request line at 607-753-4819. Once again, 607-753-4819. I'm going to say it again. 607-753-4819. Furthermore, we'll be right back. So good, yo. Good shit, yo. Is there a silent treat? No, yeah, oh, yeah. Nah, not. Yeah, he said something about that at the meeting. So I don't even know what to do. I think you know, he said yeah. that people have been signing themselves in. I mean, yeah. Throwing it in. I don't even know what to do. I get a piece of this loosely. Yeah. 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 I'm not nothing to say when you do this thing. Well, I'm gonna have something to work with. I'm gonna, I'm gonna play the song. I'm gonna get that pen. Whether or not. Just write it. Yeah, I'm not really saying much either. I'm gonna play a couple yeah. of songs. I'm gonna yeah. talk about them a little bit. Then, but, uh, and then we're gonna do that. Like, we're gonna just say what to look for. You should be good. Because after we do the top five, it should take about 15 minutes. Yeah. Expect options everywhere else in life. Are you getting them when it comes to I'm playing tree songs, expect that. So that should take us time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like eight minutes right here. Yeah. Knowing your options is the best option. Learn more at ahrq.gov. That's ahrq.gov. Public service announcement brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services in the Ice House. So here's a 26 second message of encouragement. I don't know what you had written on Hi, I'm Stacy. Look, you know, yeah. I've been there. It's tough. Yeah. And yeah, I, don't know. I just want to say if you find yeah. yourself yeah. feeling negative, use it as here. motivation. Yeah. Yeah. Let it yeah. be like the right, fuel yeah. in the fire right, to keep you going. Good shit, guys. Because the best yeah, is up. yet to come. Up, Seriously, okay. you're capable of that. great things. Things you probably haven't even dreamed Saturday. of yet. Yeah, what time is it? So oh, don't cool. quit now. Or yeah, I'll let you know. See you at graduation. Maybe I'll tune in. Do you have 26 seconds to convince a student to stay at their desk? Now you can share your message of support at boostup.org. We can keep students in school. Show in the world, even though Visit been on the boostup.org world. Boostup.org and take the first step. Oh yeah. Brought to you by the U.S. Army and the Ad Council. I love Dan, and I promise to stick with him through thick and thin. He was in Afghanistan, and he's been through a lot. And Things I can't even imagine. And I mean, I'm doing what I can, but he doesn't talk about it. He's not the same, which makes our relationship even harder. I mean, I'll try to comfort him, but he pushes me away. And I just don't know how to reach him. You may not know what to say but we can help start the conversation. Visit supportyourvet.org. A public service announcement brought to you by Iraq and Afghanistan Veterans of America and the Ad Council. This heavyweight bout is about to begin. What's the champ wearing? Looks like an examination gown. And from the back, 
Yeah, that mine is ready pretty. to go. Sure, what's with the get up? I've got to take care of my family, so I'm getting those important medical screens. The fight is over! Sure, you look pretty healthy out there tonight, but I'm still getting those tests. For a list of tests you need, go to ahrq.gov. And remember, real men wear gowns. Go to ahrq.gov. This message brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, AHRQ, and the Ad Council. You're listening to 90.5 FM, WSUC, the Dragon, Court. here on this Wednesday night, getting down to the last 40 minutes of our show, our first show back for the second half of the second season, call us up on that request line, 607-753-4819, talk about March Madness, talk about NFL free agency, anything you want, or even the NBA season, who's your one that MVP, give us a call, we're about to talk about our top, the top 20 list that ESPN Magazine had came out with, they put their top 20 most dominant athletes in the last 20 years. Me and Lil didn't like that list. At all, at Not all, at all. Definitely. I mean, they had a list that Tom Brady was close to the, uh, number 20. Oh, Peyton yeah. Manning came in at number 3. Just a, just a lot of... Uh, I, 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 I like the know, idea just, of it. Just, uh, but uh, the list itself? What are you doing? Out of order. Uh, a lot of order. guys where they shouldn't be, a lot yeah. of people where they shouldn't be, but me and Lil yeah. are going to fix it up. Yeah, we're going to fix it up. We, we keep it real. It. That's what we do exactly. on this show. That's, that's what we come to you guys with. Every Wednesday night, and don't forget Saturday, 4 to 6 as well, yes, on the WSUC website. So we're about to fix this list. We're not going to fix the whole list, but for the sake of time, but we're going to fix the top five. But just to get you guys to see what type of list um, exactly. ESPN had came out Let's with. run through it to them real quick. Yeah, How about that? I mean, see, we got y'all back. We got y'all back. We got y'all covered. This is the best show in New York. And yes, I said it. This is the best show in New York. Call out the request line in the meantime. Why we get that list ready for y'all? 607-753-4819. Come on. You know you hesitant to call. Why don't you call? 607-753-4819. Still 40 minutes left in this program. You want to get your voices heard? You want to know how y'all keep it real? Call up the request line at 607-753-4819. Yeah, so the, the ESPN list had Tiger Woods coming in at number one. Um, in the dominant 20 list that they came out with, Tom Brady was at the bottom of it. Which um, I don't LeBron, understand. LeBron James came in at number two. Peyton Manning at number three. I'll go up to ten. Uh, number four was Jimmy Johnson, NASCAR. Number five was Roger Federer. Six, Anika Sorenstam. Seven, Michael Schumacher. Eight was Floyd Money Mayweather. Nine is Martha. Ten is Usain Bolt. So, me and Lil... Gonna give you our yeah, own. We, got, we got a lot of. I don't tricks agree with this. Do. That when you look at 18, 19, and 20, Mike Trout's 18, Manny Pacquiao's 19, and Tom Brady is 20. I just don't understand this because they're making a dominance ranking. Just a dominance ranking. Listen. So I don't understand with the ranking. Focus. First of all, I'm gonna go to the most egregious part of that list. Why is Tom Brady the best quarterback to touch his hand on a pigskin? All right, yes, I said it, a pigskin, going back, okay? Going back to what the football was originally called, a pigskin. Why is he ranked number 20, and why is Peyton Manning number 3? Can you please tell me? Can you call up and tell me why is that the case? Because I don't know why that is the case. Are you kidding me? I don't either, but um, what they came out with is that they said their mathematical formula for the ranking. Oh, my They gosh. said that they rated the sports athletes in each of the past 20 regular seasons. By the best single performance metric available, Listen, they adjusted the ratings to normalize the athletes, uh, they, the, the scores in each sport across time. They narrowed their focus to the top four athletes each year in every sport, and then adjusted the data again to put these players across sports on a common baseline. So they based it out of a ranking of numbers in which the dominance ranking gave you a number, a decimal number. So Peyton Manning was number three. He Listen, was given a 12.7. He, I would say this. I would say Peyton Manning was a better regular season quarterback than Tom Brady. That I'll say. Even though it's not by a long shot. I don't even know if you can even say that. And it's not by a long shot. It's close. All right? But we all know Tom Brady is a way better 
pro season quarterback than, than um Peyton Manning was. He has the best pro season record of any quarterback to ever play the game. So if it's that close in the regular season and it's not even close in the playoffs, Tom Brady got what five rings, should have had seven. Are you serious? How first of all, even if you had and this is egregious too, even if you had Peyton rank a couple spots ahead of Tom Brady, even if that was the case, even though I don't agree with that. Number three, Peyton Man, number twenty, Tom Brady. Come on, come so, on. I mean, well, yeah, I must be some Patriot haters right there. Me and Leo, man, our own yeah, we gotta fix this we up. Gave, we gave a top five. Um, some of my top five is already named in the top ten of the uh, ESPN that we named. So I'm gonna go with and my top five. Now. So Liz can kick yeah. off this top five, and uh, you gotta give us a call and tell us what you think. Yeah, you wanna we wanna know, know what people that you think should be in the top five. Who got snubbed? Who should be in? Who's not being held into account of what we're talking about? So call that 607-753-4819. Don't waste no time because we got 36 minutes left on the show. And Liz about to tell you it's top five. So, yeah, I'm going to go ahead. Just like how we did our top five rappers of all time, mm-hmm. that was one of our great episodes. We come in again in the sports side with our top five players of the last 20 years. Or at least. All right? In any sport. So, at number five on my list... No other than LeBron James. LeBron James. LeBron James, LeBron number five. James. Number five, LeBron James. Yes, he's my number five. A lot of people say I'm critical of LeBron James on my show, but that's because he's great. He's one of the best players to ever play. I won't say the best yet. I would say in our top three, top four of all time, but at the end of the day, we cannot discredit LeBron James dominance. Even though his finals record is not where I want it to be, his dominance as a whole, regular season, playoffs, going to straight championships, seven straight championships, LeBron James is my number five. LeBron James, LeBron James, LeBron James, LeBron James, LeBron James. Yup, you know it. You know it. Number four. This was tough. All right. These, I had to choose between two tennis players. And yes, they both ranked in my top five. But the flip-flop game I had to play. And that was between Serena Williams and Roger Federer. Because both of those are my two favorite tennis players. And they're the most dominant tennis players. All right? It, this was hard because I could have flipped either or. You know, Serena Williams, we all know she dominates the game in the women's side of things. Roger Federer, he dominates the game in the men's side of things, even with the hard opponents that he has to face with Nadal and Djokovic. And to be able to still dominate the game, that says a lot to me. But I'm ranking him at number four, all right? He's one of the best men's tennis players of all time. He's my favorite tennis player of all time. His work ethic, what he's still doing at the age of 40, well, close to the age of 40, is is beyond me. It's beyond me. All right, Roger Federer number four, LeBron James number five, and number three. Listen, if you hear that gunshot in the street, you got a bolt. You say bolt, we we'll bolt. Number three, I got you saying bolt. Big up, big up, big up. You say bolt. You already know. I had my bad experience in Jamaica, so I'm not, I was gonna say big up Jamaica. But with that terrible vacation I had, I'm not even gonna go that far. All right, but. Usain Bolt got to be number three for me, okay? Usain Bolt. Number two. Man, I don't even know where to start with this guy. Because we all know I love this guy. He's the reason why I'm in the studio today. Because if it wasn't for him, I probably wouldn't have loved sports. All right? My guy. All right? Championship winning. Playoff winning. Supermodel girlfriend winning. The one and only. Tom Brady, number two, his dominance, y'all. We cannot forget his dominance, all right? The best Super Bowl performances we had ever seen the last two Super Bowls from a quarterback. Tom Brady is my number two. Now, at number one, y'all should know what it is already. Serena Williams. Serena Williams is my best athlete, top 20 in the last 20 years, all right? And I'm missing a notable guy on it at number six. Of One course. of the notables is, is a lot I'm missing. But number six, I'm missing Tiger Woods. You know, to round out my top ten, I got Floyd Mayweather in there. You know, I got a couple other guys in there. It's a lot. It's a lot. I got Michael Phelps in my top ten. It's, 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 it's a lot. But I'm going to send it over to Mike. 
Yeah, I mean, you look at these last 20 years, so we're already in 2018, so we're going back to 1998. We're going to look at our top five dominant athletes. It, it's tough. There's so many names, people that should be in the list. And, hey, I could probably do this list every week, and it'll probably be different every time. But my number five is Leo's number one, Serena Williams. I mean, she won a championship, a grand slam. Pregnant. Pregnant. Unbelievable. With a baby in her stomach. No man would probably do that. Oh, my god. Serena Williams, number five, just dominance all across the tennis. My number four, LeBron James. LeBron James. LeBron, LeBron James. 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 Number four for me. I mean, come on, this guy just proves it every year that he's the best player in the world, best player in the league. Uh, just keeps getting better each year. Uh, you just know what to get from LeBron. I mean, like I said, enough says it. Greatest basketball player in the world. Definitely. Number three, five rings. Tom Brady. Woo! Come on. Woo! Woo! In, in question could be the best quarterback in NFL history. In question, in conversation. Um, Tom Brady, again, he's going to go out this current season and still have a chance to compete for another Super Bowl because yep. you know the Patriots are still probably good. Tom Brady in the last 20 years, just unbelievable, ran football. Just just the Patriots, that all organization, just run football ever since he stepped onto the scene. My number two um, is number two, Derek Jeter, uh, the captain of the New York Yankees. Um, all those World Series the, the repeats, uh, just the dominance, the character on and off the field, the face of the Yankees, I would say. The captain, literally, the captain, Derry Jeter. Um, what, just such a good role model for people, uh, for kids watching the sport. And he was just a true a true gentleman in the sport, on and off the field, just a true Yankee. And, um, I mean, it hurts for me to say it as a Met fan. I'm not a big fan, but, yeah, he has to go number two on my list. And number one, fastest man in the world at the time. Usain Bolt, you know the deal. Usain Bolt, like, I, I I just don't know why he is on number 10 on ESPN's list. I mean, this guy has broken so many world records in track and all these Olympics and all the gold medals. It's just, there's no way you can go against him. I mean, obviously, and he's still older and he's still, and he's still winning them. And yep. it, it's just unbelievable. I mean, I know this last Olympics didn't go as, as he planned as he didn't win it, but Usain Bolt, number one in the last 20 years for me. Okay, there we had it. We tweaked up the list for y'all because guess what? That, lead, that list needed major renovations, okay? You couldn't even call Bob the Builder to fix that, okay? <laughs> so guess what? We did it, all right? We did it. We want to know what y'all, who top five you thought was more sufficient, me or Mike's, all right? Feel free, all right? We won't judge. We want to know y'all opinion. We'll be happy to get the call. Top five. All right, what's your top, top five? Top five, top five. All right, 607 753 4819. Once again, 607. 753-4819, and we know y'all want to call up. We know it. We know y'all listening. We know y'all tuning in. Y'all, we know that y'all, you know, it's a lot of work to get the pen and the paper or to plug it in the phone, but guess what? It will only take a few seconds because we want to know how y'all keep it real. We want to know how y'all keep it real, so call up the request line. It's a half hour left to go. Call up that request line, all right? We talked about a lot of stuff today. We talked about the NFL free agency. We talked about March Madness, or should I say, March Sadness, because a lot of plays was crying when they lost, all right? March Sadness, we talked about Trey Young. We talked about the top 20 athletes of all time, my top five to be exact. So we had a lot to, that we discussed. So we want to know your opinion on it. 607-753-4819. Once again, 607-753-4819. So now, it's about that time. Okay, one of the rap icons, Craig Mack, passed away the other day. I believe it was last week. All right. If y'all not familiar with Craig Mack, he was the one that started Bad Boy, literally. All right, he put Bad Boy on the map. All right, we all know about Biggie Smalls. We all know about Diddy. We all know about them guys on there, Mace and all that. But guess what? There would never be a Bad Boy if it wasn't for my man, Craig Mack. So with that being said, in honor of his passion, we're going to play a couple of his tunes, talk about him a little bit more, and then we got y'all covered with what to look forward to on Saturday's episode. So, once again, we have a couple minutes left, 28 minutes left to be exact, it's 11.32. If y'all want to call in, go right ahead. Or if y'all just want to talk to us about y'all day, alright, or how y'all day could have been better. We, we'll, we'll listen to y'all, alright, because at the end of the day, we're here for the people. All right, we're here for the people, and we're here to keep it real. So once again, 
independent and get a, and get a paper. 607-753-4819. Now with that being said, it's time for Craig Mac tribute. Starting right now. Enjoy. Enjoy. And and bass up the track a little bit. Cause I I'm here, I wanna hear that whoops, whoops, you know what I'm saying? One, two. Now who got the slave that comes to damage us and that keeps the bus in the dick back when they must talk to shoot the word of Mac or Mac. We use more like saying that you don't shoot like Mac. I'm incredible, better each the best one. Check one, two, I'm a rain, rain forever, rain like bad weather, rain like whoever, never. You can't bite my style, cause my style ain't a style, that is a style, so I can go buck wild. Bet you think you think I'm more folk for flow, it ain't so, flavor in your ear that you know. Now I'm about a second from the hook, look, strap your rap book, before you get your wet style shook. Can we get down? the song that I'm about to play right now, my favorite Craig Mack song, probably my top five songs of all time. When I hear this song, my brothers and sisters, all right, Central New Yorkers, Brooklyn, shout out. When I hear this song, I go crazy, all right? I go crazy. It's our theme song for our show. It's one of my favorite songs from Craig Mack. Once again, ORP, all right? The, the tribute continues on. Hope y'all enjoying, but this is the song right here, y'all.
Yo, Mac, I don't even understand how they didn't understand you in that Mary joint. Yeah, I Get know, that man. old robotic, futuristic George Jetson. Yeah, man. Yeah, like shooting a blab. Robotic kicking slab. Or flavor being a batter to the child of Adam in the mad hat. I bet you buy shit, come my fatter. I got the data to turn your body into animal. And just like a piece of sizzling, you'll fit inside my stomach with the eggs and crisp between. The king is what I mean. I mean, my man, get a cup and put some change inside your hand. Now hold up, let's make this official. Everybody let's agree that them just need a tissue. The folks my only issue. I bet your mama miss you, and I bet the Mac that go off like a head makes miss you. No more you whining on the charts climbing as I make the phone kick it out my harder than a nine. And if you didn't know who's rhyming, I guess I'm gonna say Craig Mac with perfect timing. You won't be around next year, my rap's too severe, kicking my flavor in your head. Here comes a brand new flavor in your head. Time for new flavor in your head. I'm kicking new flavor in your head. Max, brand new flavor in your head. Craig Mac, 1000 degrees. You'll be on your knees, and you'll be burning dragon fleas. Brother Freeze, man, some spirited and deep rooted folks smoke that leaves your brains booted. This bad MC. With stamina like Bruce Jenner, the winner, I'll taste them seeds for dinner. You're crazy like that glue, that think that you can outdo my one-two that sick like the flu. Shake them down, boy, I flip, boy, all the time. You must, boy, try to kick an eight worth a dime. Seems like there's no competition in this rap world expedition. You come around and knock you out position. Knock them out. No flame, you could ever dig a grave over the back of power pack and... It's 
really all for you. Punch back, close your eyes, try to punch that. Oil up your ankles, let your chips tap. Like the flavor, it reacts to your nose gas. Word to mama, I don't kiss a piranha. Electrocute, barracuda, I'm here to bring the drama. to my son Craig Mack. Alright, one of our hip hop greats. OIP to him, you know. So we're gonna get right to it before we go on the commercial break and before we close out the show. Once again you can call up that request line at 607-753-4819. Once again 607-753-4819. We got 15 minutes left to go in the program. We are live in the WSUC FM radio booth so guess what? We're about to close this show out. So, we got a little trivia question since we're doing the Craig Mack tribute right now. We got a trivia question for you, Mike, and myself, and for the tri-state area. Was Flavor in the Air, the song that just played on, was that a I better so. song than Juicy from Biggie Smalls? I mean, that's a tough question because both songs came around around the same time. Came out around the same time. Was that 96? 96. Four, yeah, in that time, yeah, it came out uh, two it years later, off. I believe. Um, it, it's tough because I mean, both songs just yeah. generation songs, you know, like they're still around today, still played all the time, and it's tough when you're looking at the likes of Craig Mag and Biggie Smalls. Obviously, Biggie Smalls gets some more popularity. Yeah, who so you Craig think Mag. was a better rapper before you say it was? I'm going with Biggie Smalls, Biggie Smalls, hundred percent, because I like when we did our top ten list. Craig Mag didn't make it. Yeah, he didn't, he didn't make the list. He, he'd probably be in my top 25. But, but one of the influences of hip-hop, he has to be in there. Yeah, yeah, most definitely, most definitely. because, like you said, Biggie would have had, had the success. Yeah, and he would have had the success. Would've. None of them would have. And he's very him. underrated. Craig Mack was very underrated. I like his flow. His flow, by anything, is just so dope. Like, his flow was crazy. He's one of those funky rappers that you could just, like, bop Top to his two. music. Yep. Yes. Top two, straight up. But if I had to choose between the two songs, listen, I love both. Those are my two favorite songs from each artist, from both artists, Biggie and Craig Mack. Biggie, obviously, my favorite song from Biggie was Juicy. I don't know about you. Yeah. Juicy, right? 100%. My favorite song from Craig Mack was Flavor in the Air, obviously. Both songs are my two favorites, one of my two favorites. But if I had to choose, man, I feel like Juicy is more of a motivation song for me. Flavor in the Air is something I, I could just... Juicy. You got to go with Juicy? Yeah. I don't know. I, I I go with flavor in the air. You know the the hey, the impact the impact that that song had on Bad Boy, putting Bad Boy on the map. You know it it made it possible for Juicy's to come out. You know that's why mm -hmm. I go flavor in the air. But like I said, R.I.P. to Craig Mack. What's interesting with me and Craig Mack is that he could have blow up as well as Biggie did. But obviously him and Diddy had some issues. But what interest what's interesting to me is that he went from being, you know, one of these hip rap rappers to just going out of nowhere, just going away. All right, if y'all don't know what happened to him, he went to South Carolina, I believe, and joined the Christian cult. Well, they call it a cult. I don't believe it's a cult. I just believe he joined the church. But hey, that's, you know, people want to say how they want to say it. I don't, I don't see how that's a cult. That's but interesting. That's interesting, you know. But like I said, we keep it real on the show. 
And I got a real, I got a real statement to make. We know how we talk about the Kardashians. We know how we say there's a Kardashian curse. I believe that you can say something about the Diddy curse. They, a lot of people should talk about the Diddy curse. <laughs> all right, because think about it. Almost everybody that's in Biggie's, that was in um, Puff Daddy's, Bad Boy labels, either dead or a preacher. Think about it. Homeboy. And Ciroc ain't even good. Exactly. <laughs> all right? And Craig Mack went to the church. Mace, you already know, was a preacher, obviously. Biggie, we already know what happened. In. Everybody in that label, almost everybody's either dead or, you know, going to the church. Except Diddy. Except Diddy. So, I believe there's something that could be said of Diddy Curse. But, hey, I'm not, you know, that's another topic for another day. At the end of the day, like I said, Craig Mack was one of the best. One of the, you know, best at that time. You know? And I'm interested in seeing the documentary that I heard that he made before he passed. As he, he was working on a documentary. And I'm interested to see because I want to know what drove him from being almost at the top to just going away. Like, you know, just going away from everything. I want to know. So maybe that clears up, you know, a lot of stuff. It should. It it's should. Good. So I'm very interested in 100%. seeing that documentary, you know. But at the end of the day, like I said, we're about to go on a commercial break. And we're going... So tell y'all what to look forward to on this Saturday's episode. So once again, it's 11 minutes left in the program, y'all. If you want to keep it real, we want to know how y'all keep it real. Request line is 607-753-4819. Once again, 607-753-4819. And we're about to go on a quick commercial break. And when we come back, you already know what we're about to do. We keep it real. supposed to be in Iraq. Is this what it looked like when you were over there? Sort of. Shoot, I died. Uh, I'll shut it off, okay? Okay. Alright, so when we come back, we just want to say what to look forward to on Saturday's mm -hmm. episode, and that's about it. Um, yeah. Grandpa called too. earlier. I let them too, bro. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was not So, you want to watch TV? Either way. When a vet comes home, the silences can be deafening. You may not know what to say, but we can help start the conversation. Visit supportyourvet.org. A public service message brought to you by Iraq and Afghanistan Veterans of America and the Ad Council. If you're a veteran of Iraq or Afghanistan, like me, coming home can be harder than expected. I felt a little out of place, but it turns out I wasn't alone. At IAVA.org, there's a free online community of thousands of OIF and OEF vets who got your back here just like they did over there. So now, I'm never alone. I can get the resources I need and talk to tons of people who understand where I'm coming from. Whether it's navigating the GI Bill or VA hospitals, managing the transition home, or meeting people you can share stories with, you'll find it at IAVA.org. Even if it's just everyday stuff, like getting tips on where to find a nice sweater for my dog. Did you just say that? Okay, maybe not that, but everything else. No matter where you are, Iraq and Afghanistan Veterans of America is there for you. Join our community at IAVA.org. We got your back. Brought to you by Iraq and Afghanistan Veterans of America and the Ad Council. Ah, you're finally back. What took so long? Sonny, you know how many shades of white paint they carry? Thirty-four. And so, what'd you get? Ultra premium puffy cloud white. Mmm, uh -uh, and that's gonna match the dining room? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know what? It's white. There's another can in the car. I just, I just want to sit for a sec. Oh. Are you okay? <laughs> it can happen anytime, any place, without warning. Fact is, two out of three people with diabetes die of a heart attack or stroke, and many don't even know they're at risk. The good news is, if you or someone you love has diabetes, you can lower the risk 
but it's up to you to ask your health care provider how. For more information, go to diabetesactnow.org. That's diabetesactnow.org. Brought to you by the American Diabetes Association and the Ad Council. Hello, and thank you for calling dial movie your one-stop guide to what's playing in theaters near you. For the Hollywood blockbuster, Anything But Sunshine, please press 1. For the romantic comedy, Anything But Sunshine, please press 2. For Anything But Sunshine, please press 3. If you would like to see Anything But Sunshine, please press 4. Please make your selection now. You've selected Anything But Sunshine. You expect options everywhere else in life. Are you getting them when it comes to your medical treatment? Explore all your options and talk with your doctor about what's right for you. Knowing your options is the best option. Learn more at AHRQ.gov. That's AHRQ.gov. A public service announcement brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. Hey, Billy, want to go to the state fair? Yeah! Well, you can't. Well, you see, Billy, when you throw away money on wasted electricity, you throw away everything you could have done with it. But now your parents are becoming energy efficient. They could save hundreds of dollars a year and take you to the fair next year. I want to go now. Ooh, I know you do. Saving energy saves you money. Learn more at energysavers.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Energy and the Ad Council. As a veteran of Iraq or Afghanistan, joining IAVA.org really helps in the transition home. It's a network of OIF and OEF vets like me who've got your back here, just like we did over there. That means when you need help navigating the GI Bill, we've got your back. And when you're dealing with the transition home, we've got your back. Or when you just want someone to share stories with, we've got your back. Iraq and Afghanistan Veterans of America is there for you. Join our community at IAVA.org. We've got your back. Brought to you by IAVA and the Ad Council. The dragon. We are back. This is WSUC 90.5 FM with Mike and Lil keeping it real. Once again, Craig Mack, what I need. Yes, sir. Yeah, you know it's that time. It's time for us to close out the show. Another successful program. Thank you to the listeners. Thank you, Central New Yorkers, for listening to Mike and Lil. You know, we always keep it real. We're always giving you the news that's going on in sports and pop culture. Most definitely. And we had to go all over. We had to go over a lot today, as we missed last week. We had break. Um, yep. Talk about March Madness. We have the Elite Eight upon us. Yes, Enjoy those sir. games I mean, tomorrow know. and Friday. You know we're gonna recap them on Saturday. Definitely. And that NFL free agency was crazy. Yes, without a doubt. So just to let y'all know, this Saturday at four o'clock, four p.m. to six p.m., we'll be back. All right. In order to listen to our Saturday edition. I believe it's not on 90.5 FM. I'm sorry for y'all listeners in the car. I don't believe it is. You can check, but I'm not sure. We I know believe. You got smartphones. But we know y'all got smartphones and Androids and iPhones and this and Sky- that. And, and blueberries and whatever your phone is. I don't care what it is. All right. We need to get a pen and a paper right now. This is how y'all gonna listen to our show on Saturday. If it's not on 90.5 FM, it's gonna be WW. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. My fault. It's actually WSUCFM.com. Once again, WSUCFM.com. Give y'all a chance to get a pen and a paper. Give y'all a chance. Once again, WSUCFM.com. I'm going to say it two more times. To the exclusives of that. WSUCFM.com. And one more time. WSUCFM.com. All right? You're going to... Jot it down, and then you're going to tune in on Saturday at 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. We'll be back recapping March Madness, or should I say, 
March Sadness. We'll be recapping that Sweet 16. Get that's you sweet, set up for that Elite That Sweet 16. And next Thursday's opening day. So we yes, got a lot. A lot to get of trouble. Spring chaining. Especially with basketball coming down, last 10 games. And on Saturday, playoffs. right yeah. after our show is over at 6, it's the Elite Eight. 100%. Right you after, at 6.07. Perfect pre-game show. It's a perfect pre-game show. All right, we're definitely going to have a little trick for y'all, a little fun. All right, and I'm, I took this from the NBA to jump. I took that idea. I like that idea of us filling out an NBA bracket if it was March Madness from 1 through 16. Who will win each matchup? So we're going to give y'all that too to spice it up and have some fun and good times. So, once again, tune in on Saturday at 4 o'clock p.m. to 6 o'clock and right after y'all, tune off of our show that go right to the games. Listen, we the best show on turf. There's no doubt about it. It's already proven. This is Mike and Lil keeping it real, as always. See y'all on Saturday. See you Saturday. Good night. Good night.